Hello and welcome back and welcome back to Gary the Roman cook. We're in the area of Bangkok called Pranakon and we're going to stop at three awesome places to eat street food and finish up with something sweet. So come along with us, let's go. First stop, Gary has brought us to a very special Kalmangai store and yes, we have eaten Kalmangai before in this channel, but Gary promises me this is an amazing Kalmangai. And hey, I've got to trust him, he didn't let me down last time. But I didn't tell you much about what Kalmangai was last time or how it was made, so I'll let Gary explain and then we'll order and we'll give it a try. Okay, as I said, we have eaten Kalmangai before, but I haven't told you the details about the dish and how it's cooked. And I've got Gary back here by popular demand on the channel just to tell us a little bit about Kalmangai. You're too kind, listen. <laughs> So, it sounds like a very boring dish, doesn't it? Boiled chicken and rice, as I said. But, the flavour comes from, you take the fat from like inside the cavity of the chicken, you can take it from the neck, you can take it from wherever you want, right? You render that down, so you render out the chicken fat, fry off garlic, some people just use garlic, but he uses garlic and ginger in his rice, so you fry that down in the chicken fat, then in goes the rice then in goes stock and when you boil the chicken because it's boiled chicken rice here so you're getting all that chicken goodness so the rice is actually being cooked in the chicken fat and the result is every single grain of rice or it should be all separated and all covered in that lovely film of chicken fat or mangai as we say Mangai. Man, man is fat. Guy is chicken. <laughs> and, and let me tell you i've eaten a lot of cow mangai in thailand it's one of my favorite dishes actually but this one smells amazing, it looks amazing. I cannot wait to try it. And I cannot wait to try the Kalman Gai Todd, which is the crispy chicken as well. Just to make it a little bit different from the other Kalman Gai we tried when we were in Pai. Okay, look at this. How juicy does that chicken look? <laughs> so good, the boiled version of the chicken and then the Kalmangai Todd, which as I say is the crispy chicken, deep fried, perfection. I really cannot wait for that. Have the oily chicken fat fried rice as Gary said at the start. And then of course, a nice slab of the blood cake, chicken blood cake. That really does add a richness and a creaminess to the dish. Have some sides to go with it. You've got fresh chilies as you would expect. You have, what's this called? Nam Jim Kalman Gai. Nam Jim means dipping sauce. Okay. If you say it wrong, I'll tell you what it means. Let's have some more. You have uh, the Nam Jim Kalman Gai, which is like a sure. dipping sauce, a it's chili dipping it. sauce for, uh, for, for the Kalman Gai. You have some fresh ginger and then you have this amazing, strong chickeny broth. And I think that's winter melon with a little bit of winter melon inside it. So, let's stop talking about it and let's try it. Let's get a few of those red chilies on there. Little bit of that dipping sauce, obviously you have to load up on the spice. We are in Thailand. And actually I like to put a little bit of that chicken broth over the top. Oh man. The flavor of that broth. <laughs> wow, what a chicken hit. Definitely a little bit of that on there. Let's get first a bit of the boiled chicken. Wow, I would say the boiled chicken is so, so succulent. It's the thigh, the thigh meat. I definitely prefer thigh meat over the breast meat. It's always going to be more succulent anyway, but 
The succulence and the flavour of that chicken is incredible. Maybe, I don't say this lightly, but maybe the best Calman guy I've had. You can tell. He's perfected this over five years. When you do something for that long and only cook one dish, it's inevitable that you become a master at what you're cooking. And he certainly is a master at what he's cooking. But I tell you what, I just couldn't take my eye off the Calman guy Todd. So let's try that. Mm. Yeah, again, delicious, juicy, but the crispy crunch on the outside. I love that texture against the soft chicken, the soft rice. I do love Kamen Gai Pod, but the sauce, the dipping sauce is incredible. And it just makes you want to put more on it. You get, there's a slight sweetness to it, but then you get the depth of flavor and savoriness. I think it comes from the bean paste, the red bean paste inside the sauce. And finally, let's try it with a little bit of that blood cake. I said last time when I ate Calman Guy on the video, if you didn't know that was chicken blood, you wouldn't know it was chicken blood. It's very smooth. It's very delicate flavor. It's very rich flavor, but it's it's delicate. You, you wouldn't think it's blood or offal or, or anything like that. And you definitely need to order it. Don't be put off by it. It enhances the dish and it's part of this dish. Mm. Once again with Gary, what a first stop. And this is Jack, yeah. the Hello. chef here. And I just want to say thank you. I've eaten a lot of Kalman Guy, but hands down, this is the best. Best flavor, Thank and you. not just the, the boiled chicken, the Kalman Guy Todd as well. It's so juicy, so tasty. Thank you. Thank you so much, bro. Please go. <laughs> and I'm not just saying that because I'm here, I mean it. Just walking to the second stop, and I'll introduce that in a second, but this area is awesome. There is street food everywhere, and it is in the middle of Old Town and, or Old City, and the temples and you get that feeling, you get the vibe. It's very different to places like Siam and Silom and Sukhumvit. If you haven't been to this area or explored it, if you're on your way to the temples and want some food, just need to make sure I don't get run over. If you're on the way to the temples and want some food, come and check out this area. Stop number two, where have you brought us? So we're at uh, Pa'el, which is, Pa'el is Auntie L, which is behind us. Um, Kaogeng Haiso, so high society posh rice and curry. But as you can tell, this guy at this place, uh, there's nothing posh about this. It is back street, back alley, by a canal goodness. But the Haiso, the, 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 the poshness comes from the fact that the crab meat here, the lump meat, you could be forgiven for thinking at a glance it was like a chicken breast, it's that big, it is massive. And the price to quality ratio here cannot be beaten, Joe. Cannot wait, it looks amazing. But I say this on every stop that Gary brings us to, but this really does I'm bringing you to my, amazing. these are my big hitters today, I'm bringing you to my, <laughs> to my number ones. It's times like this where I wish, I wish I could somehow get the smell across to you. It's the smell of the garlic frying in that oil with the kaffir lime leaves and then the smell of those different curries when they're finished coming off here is amazing. But sadly, we haven't invented that technology yet, so maybe in future. But for now, we'll order a bit of the food and I'll let you know how it tastes.
as Gary said, you have a selection of dishes here that you can choose from. But we are going to try the crab meat because the crab looks absolutely incredible. They all come with rice and there's pork and there's meat. But actually, we're here for the seafood and the crab in particular. And we saw her making it with the chili, the garlic, the kaffir lime root, a huge amount of oil. And then she poured in that lumped crab meat and then a load of spring onions and tossed it together. I mean, if something gets your appetite going, it was certainly that. There's no seats to sit down on, so we've just taken a couple of chairs here on this little bridge overlooking the canal. I mean, if you're choosing your setting to eat in Bangkok, you're not going to choose better than this, I guess. And Bangkok is a city of canals. You may not think it when you're in Siam or Silom or Sukhumvit, but come to the old town and Bangkok is a city of canals. So let's try this amazing crab. And this is the crab dish that I was telling you about and keep saying it's amazing. And just look at the size of that crab. And I think this is like the, what I would call the knuckle of the crab. You have, you have the legs connecting to the body and there's this like little knuckle that connects the crab to the body. So they must rip off the legs and sell them. Obviously there's a good price there. And then you're left with this little chunk of meat, which I think is one of the sweetest and one of the best in the crab. And all of it is that one, that one piece. So maybe she gets it on special deal instead of them throwing it away. But either way, I do not care, it looks insane. And the value is incredible, 120 baht. For that amount of crab and the rice, it's just, you're not gonna get better than that. <laughs> okay, let's try it. Mm. Okay, that crab is incredible, the sweetness that comes off that crab meat. And I've, again, like Kamanga, I've eaten a lot, lot of crab. Growing up on an island, it's to catch a lot of crab and taste them fresh out of the sea. You can taste the freshness in this and the sweetness. But I think Gary has killed me again. He killed me in the last video I made with him. There's celery in it. Oh, man. And I just... I need celery, though, so it's all right. That's all right. I cannot handle celery, but that doesn't take away from the deliciousness of that crab. And it comes in a very light uh, sauce, which is very creamy. It's made with evaporated milk instead of coconut, which for me, I believe is quite unique, but a great dish, a great dish. I think with seafood and crab especially, it's very important not to overpower it. And crab can get overpowered very easily. What I like about this dish is that it is light and it lets the crab come to the front. There's a good kick there and you can taste that garlic and the uh, kaffir lime leaf that we saw frying but the overriding flavour of that dish is the crab and like I say if it only didn't have the celery it would be probably one of the best things I've eaten in Bangkok <laughs> but no <laughs> just a few short steps from the place we got the crab curry from is our third stop and I'll leave the name down below but if you're thinking about authentic places to eat street food in Thailand. This is definitely right up that street. Literally, we're next to the canal again, so you have a beautiful view. But look at this place, how rustic can you get? I'll let Gary explain a little bit about what we're going to eat, and then we'll again order some and taste this delicious looking food. Okay, Gary, can you tell us a little bit about what we're going to eat? Right, so we're going to be getting, we're going to be getting a uh, bak mi kua mordang. Mordang is uh, barbecue red pork. Kua is to dry fry in a pan. So usually these would be kua gai, like dried fried chicken mm -hmm. with wide rice noodles. But she's going to take the egg noodles that you usually have in bak mi soup, uh, wonton and uh, char siu red pork soup, and she's going to fry those off in lard that she's made herself. And from that, Handmade lard, uh, you're also getting all the crispy little gubbins of pork at the bottom. So you can add those on top of your noodles and you can take the marinade from the barbecue pork that's also handmade, no packet sauces, and you can put that on top of your noodles as well. And these, my friend, are actually my favorite fried noodles in Bangkok. Wow, big don't statement. Tell, uh, aunt, <laughs> Anyone don't else. tell Auntie down at Sue and Marley that I said that. <laughs> well, I think I'm gonna like these. Cannot wait to try them. Let's 
just have a look at what is in this. You have your egg noodles, you have the mudang, which is like a, like Gary said, a char sui roast pork, I guess you would know it as, but it is just a red roast pork. You have the crispy pork crackling, I guess. There's lettuce in there, coriander, spring onions, and it's a very, it's a dry noodle, it's a dry noodle, and I love dry noodles. And of course, how could I forget, there's big chunks of that stir-fried egg in there too. Okay, let's try it. This is the pork version, as I said. There's also a chicken version if you didn't eat pork or didn't fancy pork. Very dry noodles. You can just see on the noodles the, the char that comes off that wok, the heat that she's frying it with. Let's give it a try. Mm. Very tasty. For me, and you know from my previous videos, maybe a touch too sweet. So I'm gonna add a little bit of this chili vinegar just to balance that out a bit. And that's not to say it's bad, it's just how my, my palate likes its food. And yours will be different. You might like it how it is, you might want more spice, or you might want more sweetness. That's not a problem. That's why you have these condiments on the table. So, add that in, give it a little bit of a stir, and let's try it again this time with some of that red pork. Mm. That is much better for me. Now there's a balance between the sweetness and the, and the sourness, but the taste of that wok, the porkiness that comes through, and then finished off with that crispy, crispy pork. Mmm, delicious. I can see why it's one of Gary's favourite dishes in Bangkok. This is the world famous Auntie P and Papi and number one, number one noodles, number one fried noodles in the whole of Gung Hep, Mahana Kong. Ah, After a lot of food, actually, I am getting pretty full. But after a lot of food, there's no better way to finish than some ice cream. And we've come to a place called Nutterporn Ice Cream in this really, really quaint little area. And we were just saying, this area is the perfect place to come if you want to try some authentic food which in a place in Bangkok which feels very authentic, but isn't touristy. However, because it's near the old city, they're used to tourists, and a lot of people do speak English, so it is very easy for you to come and engage and order what you want. But you get some great quality food in this area. Anyway, ice cream. We've ordered three ice creams. Coconut, which is the speciality, and I've had that before here, and it is fantastic. Black sesame, which is quite unique. And then fresh milk, which I wouldn't say it's unique, but you don't see a lot of fresh milk here. So I thought we'd try that one too. I'm gonna dig into these before it disappears because it's disappearing quickly. <laughs> As I said, we've got three. We've got coconut, fresh milk, and black sesame. And the black sesame is obviously the charcoal-y colored one. Fresh milk is more yellow than the coconut, which is a very pale white. So I'm gonna start with the coconut which I've had before and I know is absolutely delicious. Mm. What a strong, strong, rich flavor of coconut. It's not, it's not the smooth, creamy ice cream we know and love like gelato in, in Europe or even UK ice cream, which can be very good. You can taste the ice crystals in it, but come on, it's like a pound. It's 40 baht maximum for this ice cream. This ice cream is all about the flavour and the freshness in this 35 plus heat. Mm. Okay, fresh milk. Mm. Very simple, very clean on the palate. She's definitely put a touch of vanilla in there. I presume that's essence rather than actually the vanilla pod, but Another good example of the ice cream. And the one I was looking forward to trying, because it looks so interesting, is the black sesame. Wow, that one is incredibly intense. You get a huge hit of that sesame flavor. If you've had tahini, it tastes like you're eating frozen tahini, which I love, but it doesn't give you that cloggy mouth feeling. 
I think black sesame is my favourite. And what a great way to end another fantastic day exploring the food of Bangkok. Okay, I'm going to end the video there. Had a great morning eating too much food really. Not good for my waistline, but all in the aim of showing you some good places to eat. Thanks so much to Gary for joining us. Make sure you check out their channel. I'll see you guys in the next video.